I have taught my computer to play trace this shape without lifting a pencil and drawing each line only once. You'll see what I mean. Let's see how I did it. If you think that trace this shape without lifting a pencil and drawing each line only once as a name of a game is not quite catchy, you'd be right. The game I used was called Dots, and I say was because apparently it was taken down off of Steam for the reasons of being rather boring, I guess. Still, the concept is by no means unique. There are dozens of similar games out there, I just happened to stumble upon this particular one and decided to turn it into another Python exercise. So the rules are simple. You trace the shape by tracing each line exactly once. But first, let's step back and look at this mathematical concept called graphs. So graphs, not to be confused with graphs as in charts, which are also sometimes called graphs. Graphs in mathematical sense is an object that consists of dots and lines that connect those dots. Except mathematicians call dots vertices or nodes and they call lines edges or links. There's a whole section of mathematics related to these little dots and lines, which is called graph theory, and you will be surprised how close it sometimes is to everyday activities. For example, if you ever used your navigator to build a path from point A to point B, that is one of the algorithms of graph theory at work. Another example is when, for example, Google decides which page to choose in the search results, it analyzes those pages as node of a huge graph, with edges being hyperlinks between those pages and pages being the nodes. Well, in reality, uh, what Google does is way, way more complex, but, but this graph logic was, in fact, at the core of one of the first Google algorithms. Graphs are used in physics, chemistry, linguistics, and even in social studies where people become nodes and friendships or other relations become links. And I remember very little from what I studied on graph theory in the university, except that I thought it was one of the most beautiful part of mathematics. So I hope I have you pumped up about this graph thing. But before we dive into writing a program, let's do another detour and go to a city of Königsberg, currently Kaliningrad, Russia. So 18th century Königsberg, then Prussia with a P, was located alongside the river that formed two islands in the center of the city. They had seven bridges built over the river to connect different parts of the city. There was a guy named Leonard Euler, who also happened to be one of the greatest mathematicians of all times, he was planning a walking route throughout his hometown, and all he wanted was to cross all the bridges, because they were very nice bridges, but he only wanted to cross each one once, because yes, they were nice, but hey, I don't have all day to cross the same bridge over and over again. Trying to solve this problem, Euler came up with the whole theory behind what is now known as Eulerian path. That is, trace this shape without lifting a pencil and drawing each line only once. Path. So now, when we know the rich historical background of this problem, let's get back to writing the program. First, inputs. We can use matching images to find vertices in the screenshot. They all have this yin-yang design on them. To find the edges, we look at each and every pair of vertices and check if there are mostly white pixels between them, which would mean we have an edge. And when it is all done, we have the data stored in two lists. One has coordinates of all the vertices, and another all edges, which is pairs of vertices. All right, time to find the path. And for that, it's time to walk those bridges of Königsberg again to see if Mr. Leonard Euler were able to plan the route of his dreams. To get a hold of this, let's look at it from the perspective of one particular node and examine what will happen with different number of edges sticking out of it. Graph theory seems to have alternative term for everything, so the number of edges sticking out of a node is called a degree of a node. Okay, one sticking edge. This can only work if the path either starts or ends on this node. No other options, right? 
two edges, a path can easily go through this node. One edge in, one out and about on its way. Three, one in, one out, and we still have one edge left, which again means that it can only be either a beginning or an end of the path. Four, one in, one out, another one in, and another one out. No issues. So we see the pattern here. Even number of edges are all right, but odd numbers can only be in the beginning or at the end of the path. And since there's exactly one beginning and exactly one end, there need to be only two of such odd edged nodes. Any more of those and the puzzle will have no solution, which is exactly what happened in Königsberg. When you map those bridges and islands as a graph, you'll find that all four nodes have an odd number of edges protruding out of them. Which means Mr. Euler wasn't able to draw an Eulerian path through his hometown. Going back to the program, it means we need to count the degrees of nodes and if we have odd ones, make sure we start there. If there are no odd vertices, we can start pretty much anywhere. Just pick a random node. Now, searching for the path. In my limited experience writing such programs, if you don't have a clever idea, and I didn't have any, and if Wikipedia hasn't helped either, and it hasn't, it's all about brute forcing, meaning cycling through all possible options, hoping to stumble upon one that actually is the solution. Here I used a recursive function that worked like this. Check where else we can go from this point and try those edges one by one by going there and calling itself on each of them again. If there's nowhere to go, say oopsie and go back one step. It worked just fine, stumbling into dead ends every now and then, but infallibly finding an Eulerian pass I was looking for in a matter of seconds. When there was about one third of the levels left, the game introduced a new feature, double edges. It doesn't change much from the graph point of view, Nodes can be connected with two, three, four, hundred, as many edges as you like. In this happy manner, I have proceeded through levels until I encountered this. This little spiral brought demise to my program at that particular point. Fixing this funny issue was quite simple, really. Just making sure the double edge is always chosen first over the single edge. And thus, all the puzzles in this rather short game were solved. To sum up, Rather bad game, but an interesting material to practice programming on. It gives you a nice introduction to graphs and a chance to try to handle them. The source code is in the description, although, I repeat, unfortunately, the game seems to have been pulled off from Steam, so there's not much use of that. Well, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, don't forget to subscribe, and see you in the future videos. Bye.